brought it back and brought it back in a big way under head coach Chris Schwartzwell. Was that Bob Nagel up in the stands there with his shirt on? Bob uh, was told to have it back on oh, I see. before the game started, so I hope that wasn't him. <laughs> the two teams meeting at midfield. We saw a great one in 3A. Barry, I tell you what, the football, the level of play here has been extremely tough. A lot of popping going on in that 3A game. Yeah, and you know, when you talk about popping, I enjoy that, being a former linebacker, and, and that's what this game is about. It's about contact, and when they get to this level, they're very intense and a lot of emotion. And it's really fun to talk to some of these kids, like about last night, what did they do? Did they sleep well? And a lot of times they didn't sleep very well, and they just couldn't wait to get up this morning. And so the first part of this game is uh, really high in emotions. A lot of these guys have never been to a state playoff game, never been in the dome, and you know that kind of wears wears it wears you out a little bit. And then you have to settle down after that first couple of pops in there. And that's what's good about football—you get that out really early in the game. It's quite a contrast between playing outside, obviously, and coming in here. And you know, you played for the Colts for 10 years, and you have a good idea of what it takes to compete under the dome and one thing i've heard is the hydration factor and it doesn't start on game day it starts a few days before the actual game yeah it's uh i used to drop about anywhere from 10 to 15 pounds of just water weight and i would swell actually um you know after you take your ankles and take certain joints you come in and after the game and you and you get the swelling over the over the tape you could see uh you know how much the, the after turf and being inside really what it does to your body but yeah hydration starts all week long making sure that you're you're hydrated because in this dome and when you get a lot of people in here with this place is pretty well crowded again for another big game you know it gets warm in here and a lot of times you lose a lot of weight so it's important that they hydrate but not too much good insight and we are ready to go dustin russell to the 27 yard line comes Ron Colley and that's where they will set up so Ron Colley set to go with this look offensively Marcus Nally will keep our eye on him he's a good one Nick Johnson is the quarterback the flanker is Nick Marshall and you see the pullback Devin Green the wide receiver is DJ Russell the tackle Logan the guard Warner Evans under center and the rest of the Ron Colley lineup for you here as we start our 4A state final championship game. First down and 10 at the 27 yard line. And Ron Colley will keep it on the ground as they come out of their formation for the first time here today. Here's a good look at their defense. Starting strong safety, the defensive back there, Jones, Burgoff, Rose, Henry is the free safety. He's the center fielder of this defense. And then you got the nose tackle. And Nepper and Murray and Rogers are defensive linemen. Finishes off with Blum and Trap. Trapu. 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 Second down and four. Running nicely is Nolly. And Nolly up over the 35 yard line to about the 38. He's going to be very close to the first down. And we're seeing a lot of different offenses, seeing a lot of different teams. This is an offense that likes to run the ball 76% of the time. So you're going to see a lot of running, a lot of inside tackle, and then taking it back outside. And uh, they're going to challenge this defense right here. And there's a big boy right there, man. I'll tell you, these guys are not lacking in size. That guy right there is 6'5", 300 pounds, and if I had to anchor my defense, I'd want him to start it off with. Third down, and a yard. Now the pitch, again, Marcus Nallin, he's got the first down. A first down for the red, white, and blue of Ron Colley, the Rebels on the run. And I'm talking about number 74 on the defense, Ran Ermaker. Watch him right there, number 74. He takes two blockers, and... Then the lead, and that's what you do. You attack the lead with the, the linebacker and turn it all back inside, and hopefully your defensive linemen are off the block and they make the tackle and they keep it short, and that's what you want on those first down, second down plays. But unfortunately, that was the third down, and they got the first. They got the six, down from the quarterback. Canale, who doesn't get very much at all. Maybe a yard on the play. Marcus Nally, six foot, 201 pounds. Stopped on the 
play by Chase Gorman. And he's a big boy, 6'3", 235. And both of these teams come in with good defenses. And uh, most of these teams that we see in the state level basically are pretty well balanced in all three areas, special teams, offense, and defense. But exceptional defense is here now. Second down and 10 for Johnson. On the pitch. Down and 10 for him. Keeps moving forward. Breaks the 45-yard line to about the 46. This guy is a workhorse. He had 50 carries in a semi-state game, Barry. Rush upwards of 200 yards in that semi-state game. Now third down and seven. Johnson, safe. His first time to throw. He's got a man out there. It's complete. A first down for the Rebels. Down to about the 36 yard line. Devin Green out of the backfield. Well, you're running up, and you're going to set up that kind of a pass play. That's, right. Right? That's one of the things you want to do with that running game is uh, set it up, make them respect that, and then you have that little play action pass. There's the running back right out of the backfield opens up, and uh, Devin Green does a great job, 5'9, 174 pound junior. Actually, Seaman does a good job of getting out and finding the ball and coming down with an interception. Valley off of the pitch and manhandled by Dwenger. You know, this Dwenger front line is impressive. They will rotate eight guys. They've got four guys that'll play. They'll bring in a whole new unit, and they're as tough as they get, especially in that summit conference in Fort Wayne. And there's a couple good things about that. Number one, you keep everybody fresh, but number two, there's a competitive level there. You know, you don't want... You want to have the opportunity to get out there and when somebody else plays well, makes you want to play even better. Or, you know, when you're out again, you're watching from the sideline and when you're the guy that took your place is making plays, you just say, I gotta get back out there. Back and down at eight. Swing pass. And some good reaction by the Dwayne's defense. The pass caught by Stevenson. A short pickup bringing up a third down situation. Jacob Henry will respond. You have to look at it. We saw that earlier. A lot of teams run that type of play. It's kind of like a split screen where the wide receiver becomes the blocker and the slot man becomes the receiver. And it's just a quick little pass and just trying to pick up like two or three yards on the play. The ninth play of the drive for Ron Collins. Johnson passes incomplete. And when you make a miss like that, you're going to take a pop and Green got hit pretty good. Look at the ball. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's the funny thing, too, Craig, is the fact that, you know, you're going to be downfield on a passing play. You're going to get hit. Might as well get the, the catch. And it goes right through his hand. He's right there. Now he's going to pay for it. <laughs> All right. You know, that's what the defensive backs are supposed to be doing. They're supposed to remind those receivers and running backs when they throw out for passes, hey, I'm still here, and I'm going to pop you every time. Mark Bergon on the coverage for Glover. We talked a lot about that defensive line of Glover. Their secondary is as strong as they come as well. And now a timeout is called by Ron Collins. So we'll take a break. We're just underway. We're glad you joined us. The 4A championship game from the RCA Dome. Right here on the IHSAA Television Network. 